Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are the Advanced Branding Collaborative. We meet every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And tonight, we have a special guest, Wendy Mush, and is also part of the Advanced uh, Mastermind. And we're our series this uh, for the next five, and we've already had two, so there's three more to come, are about branding, uh, the branding secrets. Uh, so this week, we're going to be, Wendy is going to be talking about the purpose, the passion, and the vision. So what we're trying to do is branding has so many different sides to it, but what we're trying to do is actually build your brand. And Wendy, thanks for being with us. Yes, thank you for allowing me to present tonight. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll feel like it was worth it by the time it's over. <laughs> so before we actually start, um, as, as in typical ABC fashion, I want to go ahead and have you guys very quickly say something that you are grateful for. So Laurieann, since you're already unmuted, would you like to go ahead and start? Oh my goodness, there's so many things I'm so grateful for. Uh, I guess today I was, <laughs> I, I'm grateful for actually having been able to have some time to relax today. Very good. Roy, how about you? Yes, uh, my mother-in-law is, is in a nursing home. And, you know, with all this COVID stuff going on, you've heard about all the issues in nursing homes. But in hers, they've had zero cases of COVID in her nursing home which is pretty amazing. And we're really thankful for that. That's wonderful. Same for my, I don't know what I, my boyfriend, I guess. <laughs> I never know what to call him. Um, boyfriend sounds so high school. <laughs> but anyway, his mom, they have had cases at his mother's nursing home, but she has um, not been affected by them. So we're, we're very grateful for that as well. Um, Doc, how about you? You have something you're grateful for today? Well, I'm great. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm grateful for the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm in a nursing home and we've all been tested and nobody has COVID and I'm just lucky to still be here. And we are so glad that you are here with us tonight. Oh, thank you. So. Jenny, are you able to talk to us or are you kind of in and out with your internet? Sounds like she's probably not going to be able to talk to us. So we're just grateful that you're here, Jenny. Oh, are you able to talk? She unmuted herself for a second, but now she's muted again. Can you hear me? We can kind of hear you. Can you hear me, Wendy? Yeah. Can you guys hear her? Yeah, we hear can you hear me? You're, we hear you, but you're soft. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just grateful for my car, really. Just, you know, having a way to get around and actually go to places and do stuff. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. All right, very good. And this might sound really terrible, and I don't mean it this way, but I am really grateful that my son went to stay with his dad for a month. <laughs> I love my son to death, but this COVID stuff with, with both of us being in this house 24-7 for the last, I don't know, three months now, it's, we, we both needed a break from each other, and he, need, he definitely needed a change of scenery. So. It's kind of been really nice just being here by myself for a little while. I don't have to worry about cooking dinners or cleaning or doing laundry for him or any of that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's just been really nice. I've been able to focus on work and get a lot of stuff done. So, all right. Well, with that, we are going to go ahead and start talking about your passion, your purpose, and your vision in terms of branding. So I'm going to share my screen and start my slideshow. Oh. All 
All right. So you guys all know who I am. Tonight's class is Branding Secrets, Creating Your Perfect Personal Brand, and we're focusing on passion, purpose, ugh, easy for me to say, passion, purpose, and vision. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. Well, if you wanted someone eloquent and articulate, um, I think she left the building, so I'll do the best I can. Passion, purpose, and vision. All right. So there is one quality which one must possess to win, and that is definiteness, a purpose, the knowledge of what one wants, and a burning desire to possess it. Napoleon Hill says that. And in case you're not familiar, Napoleon Hill is the writer of Think and Grow Rich, which is one of the very first books on business and how to be successful. So we're gonna move on. And we'll, first thing I'm gonna do is give you the definition or at least the definition that I'm going to use for tonight's presentation of all three things. Um, so passion is defined as intense, driving, or overpowering feeling or emotion. So think about the things that you are passionate about in your life. Hopefully there's some positive things there and not just all like negative things that, you know, you feel intense emotion about like anger and, and revenge and things like that. Hopefully you're, you're in the mindset of love and inclusiveness and gratefulness and forgiveness and all those kinds of things. Purpose is defined as the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. A lot of times people will mix up passion and purpose or use them interchangeably and really that isn't something that you should do. Your passion is the what of something and your purpose is the why of something. And then last but not least, vision. Vision is the statement that says what someone or a company intends to become or achieve. When you start a business, whether it's a personal business online, whether it's a brick and mortar business, whether it's a company or a partnership or just a solo entrepreneurship, these are three things that you really should have in place either before you ever get started or at least at the time or shortly thereafter you get started because these things will be your driving force and these things are what's going to help you be successful as you move through your business and work with people. So the first thing that we're gonna do is define your passion. And we're doing this in this order for a reason. It's a whole lot easier to figure out your purpose and especially your vision if you can first define passion, then define your purpose, and then your vision after that. You can do this. I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, how do I ever figure out what my passion is? I can't do this. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. Well, really, it's not that hard, especially to figure out your passion. It's an easy three-step process. So the first thing you need to do is ask yourself an answer. Yes, you need to use pen and paper. It is very important throughout this whole process that you record the things that you think and the things that you come up with. So as you go through the process, you don't forget things and you can see it all on paper and see how it's all gonna come together. But you need to ask yourself and answer 11 questions in a five minute time period. And yes, you need a timer. So I'll go through a couple of the first, I'll go through the first couple questions, but I'm not gonna take the time tonight to talk about all 11 questions. So what I'm gonna do is when I post the recording in the group, in the comments section, I will put a document 
that you guys can access, download, so that you can see what all the questions are that you need to ask yourself and answer. So the first one, um, just to give you an idea of what you're talking about, and, and these questions are not hard, okay? They are very simple, intuitive, instinctual questions that you should be able to answer very quickly. And that's why you need to set a five minute timer because they don't, you, it's not something that you should be laboring over. It should be stuff that comes to your head and you write it down. Even if it's not a response that you're that happy with, just write it down. The only reason that you shouldn't be answering a question is if it doesn't apply to you and then you can skip it. But otherwise you should really take the time and try and answer all 11 questions. So like the first one, easy. What was your childhood dream job? Now, when you're really little, you don't necessarily know what a job is, but you can write down, you know, what is it you want to be when you grow up? So a cute little story I have for you is when my daughter was like four or five years old, we asked her what her dream job was or what did she want to be when she grew up? And she, she said, I want to be a cashier. And my husband and I kind of looked at each other and laughed a little bit. And we thought, okay, well, we'll see where the, what that answer is in you know, five or 10 years from now. We'll see if it's still the same if she wants to be a cashier or not. But she just thought it was really cool to go into a store and buy things and, and have the person you know, ring the stuff up and take the money and all that. She just thought that was the cat's meow and that's what she wanted to do when she grew up. Needless to say, my, doc, my daughter now has a Doctor of Occupational Therapy degree, so. <laughs> She went seven years of college to get that. So she uh, left the dream of being a cashier behind a long, long time ago. Um, so what about when you were in high school? Where did you think or hope you'd end up? So quick little answers to these questions. Doesn't take very long at all. The second step is after you are done with the 11 questions, you need to compare each answer with the following answer. So you're looking at number one versus number two. Which one was more important to you? Well, most likely it's gonna be number two. So you put a little mark beside it. Then you compare number one with number three, which one was more important to you and put a mark by it. And then, so you go do that for all 11 questions. Then you go back and you do number two versus number three, number two versus number four and et cetera, all the way down. So you're gonna do that three versus four, three versus five, three versus six, you know, all the way through until you get to the very end. And you wanna make sure that you've compared each answer with every other answer on the list before you stop. That's where your little bit of time comes in, comparing all your answers. Then you're gonna tally your answers. So you're, you're marking the winner of each set, and then at the end, you see which answer has the most marks, and most likely that's going to be your passion. So that's a pretty easy three-step process that you can go through to figure out what your passion is. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't know what all the questions are. Well, I know I get that. But to save space on the PowerPoints and to prevent you from having to try and quickly write everything down, I thought I would just make a little um, document so that you could just download it and have the questions all to yourself that you can answer the way you want to. So that's basically, in a nutshell, pretty easy way that you can quickly define your passion. So the next thing you're gonna do is determine your purpose. This can be a little bit harder thing to do. And I'm gonna say this was difficult for me. It took me a long time. However, I'm not sure that I went out about it the right way. Uh, I didn't spend time journaling and you know, looking at things. I just kept waiting for it to kind of like hit me as an epiphany. And it really doesn't work that way. You probably should spend some time journaling, maybe some time meditating, thinking about you know, where you've been, where you wanna go and all that kind of stuff. But again, um, this 
is a five-step process that really, again, is not that hard. It does take a little bit more time. And so it's not something that you're probably gonna sit and do in a 10 minute time frame. But again, it's something that's very doable. So the first step is that you need to consider your past. Now, you need to put pen to paper when you answer these questions because you have to be able to look back and forth at what you, you know, at number one and then number two and, and all of that. So get out of your head that, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't like to do it. Journaling is awful and blah, blah, blah. Just suck it up, buttercup, and do it. You'll thank you. You'll thank me and you'll thank yourself by the time that you're done. <laughs> so consider your past. Now, what does that mean? It means that you need to think about the low points and the high points and anything in the middle. So basically your entire past. But what out of all those things that have happened for you, notice I said for you, not to you, because everything happens for a reason and you decide what you're gonna do with it. Um, so out of all those things, what left a mark on you or what changed you and made you the person you are today? So regarding the high points, what are your accomplishments? What were your successes? What are you most proud of? And what helped you be most successful? So those are all questions that you can ask when you think about everything that's happened to you in your past. Regarding the low points, you need to ask yourself, what was the most painful out of those points? Now, the events themselves are not what's important. I mean, they're important to you, obviously, or they, they wouldn't be low points and painful to you, but the actual events are just events. What's important is how you came through them. What did you do to pick yourself afterward, up afterwards and move forward in your journey? Okay. So if you guys have any questions as I'm going through this stuff, please feel free to stop and ask me. Or if you would like to make a comment, you're welcome to do that too. So step number two is determine your core values. What things are most important to you? What are the things that you live by? What do you hold near and dear? What drives you? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it love? Is it success? Is it influencing others? Is it helping others? Whatever it is, write it down. And it can be more, more than one thing, but you can incorporate that in the process too. So whatever your core values are, you need to go after them with everything you are and everything you have because you are not who you are without your core values. And whatever your core values are compared to someone else's doesn't matter at all. You do what's important to you and what motivates you. Number three, think about where you have been versus where you want to go. So you're doing this in terms of your strengths, your gifts, and your talents. So create sentences like, I'm really great at blank. I'm passionate about blank. I'm energized about blank. Or I'm energized when I do blank. Fill in those questions. See what you come up with. Number four, close the gap between those two. Close the gap between where you've been versus where you wanna go. What does that mean? Well, it means that you kinda of need to say, okay, I'm really passionate about this, but I don't know how to do it. So for example, I'm passionate about scuba diving, 
but I don't really know how to swim. So that's kind of a big dichotomy there. So you need to figure out what you need to do in order to become successful at being a scuba diver. So, you know, first of all, you probably gotta learn how to swim. Second of all, you need to get, you know, the gear that you need to do swimming, to do scuba diving. And then you probably have to get certified in order to scuba dive. So there's a lot of things that go into being a successful or expert, or even just a, a scuba diver in general. So that's what I say when I mean close the gap between the two. And I'm, that's an extreme example. Chances are you've already got some skills that you need for your passion. You just maybe need to tweak something somewhere along the line. So you come, you work with a coach or a consultant, or you partner up with somebody who has the skills that you're lacking and you guys work together to fulfill your, your purpose. Does that make sense? Anybody have any thoughts or questions about number four? And then number five, articulate your life's purpose. Yes, that means you're actually going to write it out. And why? Why do you want that? Why do you need that? Because that's what you're going to share with the world. It's what brings you here or why you're here or what you're going to do, how you're going to get to where you want to be. What is your inspirational reason for being? What is your foundational reason for being, or basically your core essence? Why are you who you are? And what do you want to do with that? And most importantly about this, capture it with a compelling sentence or phrase. Nobody wants to read a 10 sentence paragraph on your life's purpose. You're going to lose everybody right off the bat if you do that. For example, one woman's life purpose is she wants to connect, inspire, and empower communities. That's her life purpose. It's pretty concise, but it's pretty powerful too. So she wants to connect communities together, she wants to inspire them to work together, and she wants to empower them to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish. So you don't get much more compelling than that. So you need to kind of bring your purpose into focus for yourself, but you also need it for those that you're going to work with. I do have a question, Wendy. I did work with a few people in this purpose aspect. And are you not in agreement though that there are several people who will come up with those three terms or something to find, but it's not specialized enough for people to understand it. And I think that that's really important for branding, but also to say, how are you unique? Why would I go to you versus someone else? I, if I, I don't want to step over here, but I feel that that's really important. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's, I think that's part of why some people fail is because they're not spending enough time on defining their passion, determining their purpose and developing their vision because they don't know where they're going. They're, they're off in too many different places at once, trying to do too many different things for too many different people. And so if you get laser focused on your passion, your purpose and your vision, it's going to drive your programs, it's gonna drive your products, whatever it is that you're doing. You know, maybe you're an inventor and you wanna invent some product that's gonna change the world. Well, you have to know why you want to change the world. You have to know what you're gonna to do to change the world. And you have to know why pe people want it. I mean, how are you gonna know if people want it or not? You have to make it compelling. You have to make them have an emotional response to it. And that's where your purpose comes in, knowing your purpose and being able to state it concisely and, and articulately. And so the last thing we're gonna talk about 
is developing your vision. So I don't necessarily have a three-step process for this because really and truly by this point, if you have defined your passion and determined your purpose, your vision is most likely going to write itself. If it doesn't write itself, it's gonna come close and you just have to keep refining it down. However, if you feel like maybe you can't do it, or you're still not there yet, then start dreaming. You probably have already dreamed or dreamt, whatever you wanna say. <laughs> so think about the dreams that you've had already, or start dreaming about what you want and write that stuff down. Then brainstorm. Write, write, write. Every idea that you have, every thought that you have, every inspiration you have, just write it down. I have another question, sorry, interrupt oh. again. But do you feel that for some people, because I know I write things down and I do journal, but I also find a vision board is really important for me because I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. So not just the writing, I need the visuals. So I'll cut out pages, papers, and all, you know, pictures, and I'll put them with it. That makes sense too, right? I think it's important for people who are visual, because then it, it sticks more to their subconscious. So you can do a vision board that works really well for some people. You can do a mind map, or you can journal, make lists, you know, whatever works best for you. The process itself is not what's important. It's getting to the end result. That's what's important. So however that works for you is what you need to do because a vision, a vision is the big picture. It's the big picture of the way things ought to be, at least in the way you think they should be. And so if it touches a chord with someone, they're, they're gonna want to partner up with you. They're gonna wanna follow you. So if you can communicate your vision in a way that, you know, touches people, resonates with them, they're going to be raving fans of yours and they're just going to come after you like mad dogs because they want what you got and they want to work with you to get it. So, and, and visions also help people raise their hopes and expectations. Visions inspire them. And when people are inspired by something, they have enthusiasm and energy to want to work on it and to help you do it, come alongside you and help you do it. So back to this little process and then, you know, you ask people for feedback, you know, come up with vision statements, ask people what they think of those vision statements that you've come up with. Now, knowing full well that you will probably need to change it, tweak it, refine it. So if you think, oh, I've got the best vision statement in the world and you ask people for their thoughts on it, be prepared that they may not think the same thing and that's okay. Be open to whatever their feedback is. Take it and look at it honestly and genuinely because sometimes it's a whole lot easier for someone else on the outside to tell you something that you don't realize because you're locked in the box. You can't see what's outside the box or on the box because you're locked inside of it. So it's always really super important to be open to feedback. Whether it's feedback you want, like, or don't, just be open to it and seriously consider what it is. So while you're developing your vision, ask yourself what the world will be like when your thing, whatever it is, whether it's a process, a program, a system, or event, what will the world be like when that's a success? How will you change the world? What will you do to make others' lives better? So when you go through this whole process, at the end of it, 
you should have a vision statement. Can I just say something? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, so just coming back to your question, Lorian, um, it doesn't really matter what you do. It only matters that you can feel the emotion behind it. Because feeling that emotion behind your future vision is really your entry card into manifestation as well. It's, it's really creating that feeling in yourself. And if the vision board is, uh, is the thing that creates that feeling inside of yourself, you can really connect to it, then go for it. Do what... Uh-oh, I think maybe we lost her in the middle of her thought. But yes, Jenny is right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you need to do whatever works for you. It doesn't matter what other people think of your process. All that matters is that you get the end result you're looking for. And, and one other piece of information that I wanted to kind of include in all of this, it's really oh. going to, oh, go ahead, Jenny. Technology, ain't it great? <laughs> It's wonderful when it works, but it stinks when it doesn't. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, this is all going to be really tough for you to do if you don't know what your story is. So that's kind of a whole training in and of itself to write your story. But basically, you're going to talk about where you were, what's happened and how it changed you what you're doing now and how it's changed you and what you want to do as a result of that change so knowing your story is an integral part of being able to to determine your passion your purpose and your vision so Lorianne, i saw you that you had um unmuted yourself would you like to respond yeah no i'm really glad that that was stated it's uh it is for me i have a vision board i've had one and i i update it but it's also i put it on my fridge and i put pictures in my bathroom and everywhere so it's not just in a book so that every day i look at them and i like i said i started off with hand with the writing but it didn't catch my attention. And they do say that there's different levels of people, right? So the ones that are more visual, the ones that are more, you know, I think there's like five or six different ones, the scent, the smell, the touchy or whatever. So uh, so thank you. I really want to thank Jenny for, for standing up for that. And definitely. Yeah. I'm happy that's, that's part of the uh, process. Mm -hmm. And really and truly, you know, I've, I've given you these, these three steps. And I, I did make a case for doing them in a certain order, because when you do them in a certain order, then the subsequent steps or the subsequent tasks are easier. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it in a different order. I do really believe that your vision statement should be your very last thing. And probably your very first thing well, you could, you could come probably determine what your passion is, but then after that, you probably should work on your story a little bit because your, your story is going to help you determine your purpose a lot easier. So knowing what your passion is, your superpower, whatever you want to call it. So everybody has something that they're really good at. And sometimes, hopefully, if all goes well, you want those things to coincide, you know, where they do coincide, you're, the things that you're good at and the things that you're passionate about. Sometimes they don't, and then that makes it a little bit harder to come to some understanding. But once you've got your passion, think about your story, how your story has affected your life, and good and bad, and what you're gonna do to move forward. And then 
your purpose and your vision will probably come from that. So that's really all that I have. I, everybody's busy. It's summertime for us, not so much for Jenny because she's in the southern hemisphere of, and around the world on the other side of the world. But I know everybody's busy and got a lot going on. So I didn't want to take, you know, a whole ton of time to go through this because really and truly I want you to take the time on your own to do these things. And it would be great if you're watching the replay or even for those of you, I'm sure that those of us that are currently on the call have probably done some semblance of this. Maybe you need to tweak it a little bit. But those of you that are watching the replay, it'd be great if you would comment underneath um, and let us know how this process is working for you. And if you need help with it, please reach out to us and ask us. I know that I would be more than happy to you know, do a Zoom call with you, or maybe we could do something as a group if people, you know, have questions or concerns or just stuck. If you're stuck, being stuck is hard. It stinks. Nobody likes to be stuck because when you're stuck, it's hard to get unstuck, especially by yourself. So reach out to someone that can maybe help you. Uh, I just actually thought of something too, because you said that you're going to be listing uh, those 11 uh, the process for the very first one. It'd be fun if some people would actually share if they're watching this, if they could share it. I'm more than willing to have fun and do that. Once you post it, I'll do the 11 steps and uh, see that where that takes. So uh, everyone here, I challenge them, anyone who is watching, I challenge you just for fun. Let's see what happens. I don't know if anyone will, but I'm more than willing to. <laughs> there you go. Good idea. I called so, it. So we'll issue the challenge. Oh, yeah. Um, one second, Roy. I'm issuing a challenge to everyone that watches this replay to complete the 11 questions that help you figure out what your passion is. And if you don't want to share what your answers were, that's okay. But at least tell us that you did it. And maybe you could say what your end result is, what you came up, up with for your passion. Roy, what, what would you like? Well, I was just going to say, uh, I was really intrigued by the passion part. I've never, I've never seen that displayed that way of how to reach that. I thought that was very interesting and I'm anxious to look at that form, see what those questions are. And I will be very happy to provide it for you <laughs> as soon as I get the recording in the group. So, thank you for that feedback. I appreciate that. I, I really do hope it helps everyone. And my whole goal in doing this presentation was not to make it feel like a, you know, big, long, laborious process, but to actually be something that you might want to just really jump into head first and go through so that you can really nail down what they are so that you can help yourself. Because after this, then you would want to move on to your mission and and that's how you're going to um, enact your vision. And that's kind of different for everyone. So it's really not something that's super easy to kind of quantify in a presentation. But again, you know, I've done that too. I'm sure that's, Lorianne, you've probably done it, Roy, Jenny. So if you have questions or concerns or get stuck with that, we would be more than happy to help you with that as well. So. All right, if any, unless anybody else has anything they want to add to the presentation part itself, we'll go on and we'll briefly tell you what's to come in the coming weeks. Going once. All right, it was a great presentation. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, thank you very much. That was really good. And again, we're looking forward to those questions. I'm looking forward to doing that. Thank you. Yes, I'm challenging people. Start engaging with us in the group. We're here to help. We want to help. We want feedback. <laughs> so, all right. And so Jenny next, I loved it, Wendy, in um, the chat. Just to let you know. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that, Lorianne. It's hard to, when you're presenting. It's hard to kind of monitor the chat and everything else too. All right. So our upcoming topics. Next week, Jenny, on the 17th, Jenny, Jenny is going to talk to us about utilizing your timeline and clearing limiting beliefs and developing mindset. So that, I think, is going to be a fabulous presentation, and I can't wait for it. 
And then on the 24th, Roy is going to talk to us about your ideal client, who is your target audience, and your tribe, and how to figure that out. And last but not least, on July 1st, Lori Ann is going to grace us with all kinds of information and details about how to create an irresistible offer. So does your product or service value outweigh the cost? So meaning that your raving fans are gonna go after your irresistible offer regardless of the price because they want what you have and they'll do anything to get it. So Perfect. that's what's coming up. And I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Perfect. So they just have to remember every Wednesday night, it's easy to remember, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we are here. And it is posted on, let's make sure that they know this, is, and it's, it's posted mm -hmm. everywhere, Advanced uh, Branding Collaborative on Facebook. And also, if it's easier for you guys to remember, advancedbrandingcollaborative.com. And you'll get all the information there. Yes, Lori Ann has gone to a lot of work creating a wonderful website for us. So go check it out. Advancedbrandingcollaborative.com or is it Collab? Yeah, it's our full name, advancedbrandingcollaborative.com. Okay. Yes, www. Yeah. And we are also on LinkedIn. Join the group on LinkedIn. Um, make sure that you join us there. And uh, I don't know, I haven't really checked the Instagram, but definitely on, on our Facebook and our LinkedIn, two very important places to be a part of. YouTube also, correct? That's right, say. too. We do have the YouTube uh, replays, too. So if you don't see that, and if you're not a, not a member of the ABC, we'd love you to be. But there's also, if you look up in the YouTube is Branding Collab, though, right? It is under yeah. Branding yep. Collab. Right. So it's a bit short form, so Branding Collab. You'll find us there, too. So, but we always upload the, the videos to the, the group, the ABC group on Facebook, and then we also put them on the YouTube channel. So you should be able to find them one place or the other. So Perfect. All right. Well, thanks to you guys for being here. And I want to thank everybody who watches the replay. And remember the challenge, answer the 11 questions that I'm going to attach in the group, in a comment underneath the replay. And if nothing else, tell us what your passion is as a result of answering those questions. So. All right, everyone. Well, I think that's it for tonight. So we will see you next week, the 17th, Wednesday. 7 p.m. Eastern Time for Jenny's presentation on timelines and limiting beliefs and developing mindset. So, all right, guys, have a great week. We'll see you next Good night. Week. Thanks again. Bye.